Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi and welcome back to ASEAN News everyone and here is today's news. Malaysia's public health system hit hard after coronavirus cases increase in the country. According to data by Nations Health Ministry, Malaysia surpasses 1 million coronavirus cases amid an outbreak of the highly contagious Delta variant that has slammed its public health care system. Is a, is a really, really an alarming number to to be taken lightly off, because we have seen uh, we have seen the United States, we have seen neighboring countries, we have seen so many countries who who took the fall, and right now, uh, what I see is Malaysians are still still at a very relaxed uh, pace uh, as compared to the first MCO, so this is. Be because I, I have a family of my own, I have a three-year-old, I, uh, I have parents who are in their 70s. So these are very scary part, the thought of losing your loved ones uh, just because of the ignorance, it's a little bit scary. A vaccine recipient says the government must treat the outbreak with an emergency and speed up the vaccine program to boost immunity to fight COVID-19. The government needs to treat this outbreak as an emergency. The vaccination process should be faster and more comprehensive for all, especially for people in the villages. The Southeast Asian nation is battling the peak of its pandemic even as the government accelerates its vaccination program and imposed strict lockdown measures since June. Malaysia Health Ministry reports a record 17,045 new coronavirus cases, bringing the cumulative total to more than a million infections and nearly 8,000 deaths. Malaysia has one of the region's highest number of coronavirus infections per capita, but also one of its fastest vaccination rates. The country aims to cover 80% of the population by December. About 16.5 of its 32 million population is fully vaccinated. Authorities evacuate thousands of residents after rain and coast flooding in Manila City. Philippine authorities evacuated thousands of residents of the capital Manila when heavy monsoon rain, aggravated by a tropical storm, flooded the city and neighboring provinces. The monsoon rains are terrifying, so we decided to evacuate early. In the previous typhoon, it was difficult to evacuate since it was past 10 p.m. when the floods rose, so we don't want that incident to happen again. We don't want the waters to rise and be caught in it again. The refugee says they're facing a difficult situation like flooding, but they guarantee to still implementing social distancing to combat COVID-19. Ngayon, uh, siguro namin na yung we make sure that social distancing is being implemented, and we have some reserve face masks for everyone. So if they forget theirs, we are able to provide for them. More than 2,900 residents are taking shelter at an elementary school in the suburb of Marikina City after a nearby river started overflowing from continued rains. In Cavite province, south of Manila, Coast Guard personnel helped residents evacuate and carried the elderly out of their homes. While the National Disaster Agency says 14,023 people and most of them from a flood-prone Manila suburb 
have moved into evacuation centers. Harsh weather has hit several parts of the world in recent weeks, bringing floats to China, India, Western Europe, and heat waves to North America, raising new fears about the impact of climate change. A group of cycle drivers pedal down the road with a mobile food bank and deliver free food to residents in Cambodia. The country hit hard by coronavirus, Cambodian cyclo drivers are flocking to the streets of the capital Phnom Penh with mobile food banks that allow residents crippled by the pandemic's economic hardships to pick up free food and essentials. The initiative includes 10 colorful hand painted pantries placed atop the cyclos that are then stationed across various points in the city so those in need can take and those who have the means can donate. Thanks to the kindness of those more fortunate who provided these foods and necessities, I can deliver them to poor people like trash collectors, beggars, street sweepers and anyone else who is struggling to make money to buy food. A resident grateful for the activities and happy with this charity work and she says from this action can help vulnerable people in the country. I'm very happy and I love this project. With this charity work, I feel like I've been reborn. No one has given food to me every day like this. I'm so thankful. Now I can sleep well at night after eating their food. Before this project started, I could not sleep well because I was worried that the next day I will not make enough money to buy food. Hao Tang, a 21 year old student in Phnom Penh, came up with the idea of the mobile food banks after seeing the cyclo drivers struggle. He also hopes the initiative will help Cambodia's iconic cyclos survive during pandemic. Hao Tang spends his days working on the project and his nights studying. Hao Tang's organizational Local for Local, which is relies on donations, pay the cyclo drivers a small wage of around $17.50 a week to deliver food, water, and other essentials to Phnom Penh's most vulnerable people. Japan donates 1 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine to Cambodia to help combat COVID-19 in the country. Japan donates 1 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccines to Cambodia, arrived in the capital Phnom Penh to boost people's immunity to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Japanese ambassador says Japanese government decides to donate country-produced vaccine to Cambodia. Japanese government decides to give 1 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccines, which are produced in Japan, to Cambodia. Meanwhile, Prime Minister of Cambodia thanks the Japanese government for supporting Cambodia in the fight against the SARS-CoV-2. The royal government and the people of Cambodia is honored and I express our deepest gratitude to the royal government of Japan, which supports Cambodia in the absolute fight of the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen and his government officials attend the receiving ceremony at the airport as 332,000 doses are taken off the ANA plane. According to the Japanese embassy in Phnom Penh, the rest of the vaccines will arrive in the next few weeks. The donations include medical materials, hospital equipment, and cooling system to keep the vaccines. Cambodia's coronavirus death toll stands at 1,188. China and Thailand promise to combat pandemic and improve bilateral exchanges to the new level. 
China's top legislator Lin Jiangsu hold talks with President of Thai National Assembly Chuan Lek Pai via video link in Beijing, while both sides pledge to enhance bilateral exchanges. Li, chairman of the National People's Congress Standing Committee, said that China and Thailand, as good friends, good neighbors, and major regional developing countries, should embrace new development opportunities for the comprehensive strategic cooperative partnership. Li adds, China will work with Thailand to strengthen strategic communication, seek win-win cooperation, and advance the bilateral relations to a new level. Li called on the two countries to continue cooperation in combating the COVID-19 pandemic, enhance the strategic synergy of the Belt and Road Initiative, Thailand 4.0 strategy, an Eastern Economic Corridor project, deepen people-to-people -people and cultural exchanges, and advance cooperation in various fields. He notes, the Congress Standing Committee has been fulfilling its mission of putting the people first, adhering to the development path suited to China's national conditions, giving full play to the institutional advantages of China's governance, and upholding an open and inclusive attitude toward cooperation. Li adds, China is willing to strengthen exchanges between political parties with Thailand. For his part, also Speaker of Thai House of Representatives says Thailand cherishes its profound traditional friendship with China and firmly adheres to the One China principle. He affirms that Thailand has paid close attention to and appreciated China's success and congratulated on the Congress Standing Committee centenary. He also says the National Assembly of Thailand would like to strengthen friendly exchanges with the National People's Congress. Indonesia Volunteers Group lends free oxygen cylinders to citizens to help combat COVID-19. A group of Indonesian volunteers gathered in Jakarta area to lend out free oxygen cylinders to coronavirus patients in an effort to help people struggling to source them amid one of the world's worst outbreaks. Indonesia efforts to combat the rapid spread of the Delta variant and some people desperately trying to find hospital beds, oxygen and medicine for loved ones and stretching its healthcare system to breaking point. The residents submit an application online then pick the cylinder up from the small office in Depok for one week period at a time. Indonesia is one of the countries most affected by the pandemic in Southeast Asia with 3.8 million cases and 80,000 deaths. The group also calls Action of Our Indonesia Movement or GITA has lent out about 30 cylinders so far since the initiative began in early July from a total supply of 400 donated cylinders. While the system works largely on word of mouth with people hearing about it on WhatsApp or Instagram, GITA does not verify the source of oxygen or rigorously check the returned cylinders beyond a basic disinfection. Anto Mulyanto borrows a cylinder in hopes of helping his sister, a suspected virus patient, but she eventually passed away. Sourcing a cylinder, which has a 2-3 to three hour capacity, is only one part of more complicated problem. Meanwhile, Muhammad Isan thanks to God because from this can help his mother from COVID-19. Citizens of Indonesia express his emotions after government extends lockdown for a week. The resident expresses irritation when Indonesia starts a week's extension of COVID-19 curbs in the country, after cases of Delta variant continue to surge. In the capital Jakarta, roadblocks are in place with officers inspecting paperwork to ensure the only essential workers are traveling. I'm annoyed that I haven't been able to work for about three weeks, and now I want to go to work. They stopped me and asked for my assignment letter, and my office hasn't given me the letter. <laughs> the 
Indonesia has become Asia's COVID-19 epicenter, particularly on the densely populated island of Java and Bali, where oxygen supplies are running thin. Total infections have climbed to more than 3.1 million. Both deaths and infected case numbers have been undercounted. Meanwhile, Indonesian President Joko Widodo says the government will gradually adjust some restrictions while allowing traditional markets and restaurants with outdoor areas to open, with some limitations to some businesses including saloons and vehicle repair shops. Less than 7% of Indonesia's population of 270 million has been fully vaccinated, with Southeast Asia's largest country primarily reliant on shots produced by China's Sinovac. South Korean team offering food to Olympic athletes amid COVID-19. The country's decision to have its own food program at the Tokyo Games has become an irritant to already frayed relations between Seoul and Tokyo, prompting criticism in Japan on social media and among some politicians. Organizer says food served at the Olympics is safe. The Korean Sport and Olympic Committee says the country has run its own food programs at every Olympic Games to help its athletes feel at home amid COVID-19 pandemic. The group composed with 16 members. We have put more effort in this time because of the coronavirus concern and because people are quite sensitive over the origin of the ingredients, such as those from Fukushima. Additionally, the weather here is very hot and humid and we have to be extra careful of hygiene to prevent food poisoning incidents. Their work starts at 4 a.m. and ends at 8 p.m. and they never leaves the hotel in accordance with protocols preventing the spread of coronavirus. Furthermore, Jeong Yong-guk, director of the National Training Center at the Korean Olympic Committee says the team is only trying to follow safety measures and government guidelines. Kitchen staff pack rice, kimchi, dried seaweed and ate other dishes into plastic boxes before delivery staff journeys to athletes' villages three times a day to make a drop-off. Meanwhile, the manual says seafood, vegetable and fruits from eight prefectures including Fukushima are banned. Japan had originally built the Games, which were postponed by one year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as a recovery Olympics from the devastation of a decade ago, including by promoting Fukushima produce. The World Health Organization says in 2016, the Japanese authorities had monitored food contamination closely and implemented protective measures to prevent sale and distribution of contaminated food in Japan and outside of Japan. A medical worker inspires patient COVID-19 with a dance from Kazakhstan in northwest China. An ethnic medical worker from northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region who rushed to Wuhan, the central China city, once hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic during the most difficult time, was igniting the hope of patients through Kazakh folk dance. She arrived in Wuhan and started to work at a local temporary hospital treating coronavirus patients with mild symptoms. She finds that most of the patients are either anxious or suffering mental breakdown, and she sees a little hope in recovering from the disease. Along with upbeat Kazakh music, her moves drew a lot of attention from the patients before long and more and more patients joined in. We didn't anticipate it at all. The patient stood in four to five lines spontaneously. Then I started to dance. They either imitate my moves or take pictures of me dancing. They were cheered up and the atmosphere was improved. Mm -hmm. 
叫巴哈古里托勒亨，我是自治区维吾尔医院党政办的副主任。Many of the patients recorded the dancing with their phone and shared the footage on social media platforms. Her dancing boosted people's morale in fighting against the pandemic. Although that was a difficult time in Wuhan, she managed to pull through alongside with the numerous people she motivated. Malaysian contract doctors protest against the government and demand permanent job security. Contract doctors hold placards and protest peacefully at Kuala Lumpur Hospital as part of a nationwide strike to demand better job security in the form of permanent posting as well as better pay and benefits. A contract doctor's representative, who only wanted to be known as Dr. Muhammad, urges the government to treat them equally, and an offer by Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin to extend their contracts by two years was not enough. Data from Malaysia's Health Ministry shows 23,077 contract medical officers underwent training and compulsory service between December 2016 and May 2021, but only 789 of them are offered permanent positions, leaving many in limbo and some applying for jobs overseas. Malaysia reported a record 17,045 new coronavirus cases. It has one of the region's highest number of coronavirus infections per capita, but also one of the fastest vaccination rates. The country aims to cover 80% of the population by December 2021. And that's the end for today's episode. Please continue to maintain the health protocol. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely weekend.